I hate blog days. Hello and welcome to Rider Sanctuary. You'll have to bear with me a little bit today. I've got a migraine that you wouldn't believe. This is what happens when a client likes to do blog days. It usually involves me sitting in front of a white computer screen for four hours at a time doing a ton of research for one specific blog. And my cat is clawing up the curtain. Anyway, today I want to go over how I track my freelance writing. Keeping track of your stats is imperative, especially if you're trying to pay taxes and afford everything that you want to pay for. It's also great to keep track of what you're doing to see where you need to improve. I kind of geek out a little bit on it. I created a spreadsheet back in 2014 that I've been working on since then. And it's gone through a ton of different changes, but it's one that I use every day. Why do I keep track of my stats? Well, first of all, it supplies motivation. One of the things that keeps me going is being able to surpass my ability. Now, at first, I used to track how many articles I would write in a day, including how many words and how much it paid. And then the next month, I would try to surpass that number. Now, I just pretty much focus on words and... Now, I'll just focus on words and uh, try to beat my record after that. What are you doing up there? I mean, it's because I'm creating a video. Everybody wants to join in. Anyway, tracking my stats helps with motivation. Secondly, I like to estimate my success. Now, the way I have the spreadsheet set up is that it'll give me an accurate, semi-accurate, portrayal of how many words I will type throughout the entire year, including how much money I'll make. I'll show you that in a second. It's kind of extensive and kind of cool if you're a spreadsheet geek. But at any point, I can look at my spreadsheet and tell you exactly how much I make per year. And probably one of the most important reasons why I keep a spreadsheet of my freelancing success is to help me keep in a professional headspace. No, you got the people out there that'll punch a time clock and get paid for their time at their job. For me, the spreadsheet is essentially punching that time clock. And when you're accountable to nobody but yourself, you need every little bit you can get to motivate you, to propel you, to keep working. Otherwise, you can just slack off and do whatever. There's some days where I wind up getting sucked into the weird places of YouTube or watching Netflix for hours on end before I realize the day's already gone. But using the spreadsheet helps me keep focused. So anyway, let's take a look at the spreadsheet, shall we? Now, first of all, I create the spreadsheet using LibreOffice. It's a free software that you can download and install. I'll leave the link in the description below, and it's uh, completely compatible with uh, Microsoft products. Essentially, it was designed by the same people who did OpenOffice. But anyway, this is the uh, spreadsheet that I do per day. So you got your paid for writing, blogging, and other projects like YouTube, whatever. I like to keep track of all the different things. So let's say that I wanted to start writing. Um, we'll do like I start at eight o'clock in the morning. Oops. And I worked until, uh, let's say 825. In the process, I also typed 750 words and I was paid, we'll say $7 and 20 cents. Now, as you can see, my pay per hour is 1728. If I was to keep writing nonstop, which I do quite often, this is the total hours that I've typed. And the efficiency, this is how much of a geek I am. The efficiency will tell you, like in an eight hour workday, how much time you've consumed of the eight hours. So if I was to stop for the day, I would only have an efficiency of 5.2%, which is piss poor. That's where this comes in. Now this line here, um, what are you doing? I've actually have quite an extensive amount of data in there. So if I was to work a certain amount of time throughout the day, this will change. Now this here is pretty much a motivator for me. Essentially, I talk shit to myself. So like with only 25 minutes out of an eight hour day, it's gonna tell me, um, what are you doing? So let's say I work on something even longer. Uh, we'll start at 825 and work our way to 1025. Let's say that I did a 2500 word project and we'll say it netted me $40 from my private clients. See, now I've done 145 minutes throughout the day. That's 30% of eight hours, and it changed to, well, that was pathetic. So if I was to call it quits for the day, then I'm just essentially telling myself that I am pathetic. But what about if I wanted to blog? Let's say that I go ahead and blog from 1025 to, uh, I'll say noon, because that's about how long it takes me to write one of my blog posts. And I did a, a 1500 word article. So it's 95, I still, the paper hour dropped because I'm not getting paid for the blogging. The same with the other projects, like with my YouTube videos, I don't get paid for that either. But it eats away that eight hour total because I work from, well, I schedule myself between eight and 
five. So I get an hour in between there for lunch. So if I do anything that's not getting me paid, then that's going to impact how much I get paid per hour. So we're going to go ahead and say that at one o'clock, we did, went ahead and did a video on YouTube until about 2.30. That's funny because it takes me 30 minutes to record a six minute video. That's why there's always jump cuts, especially since I have a hard time uh, getting my thoughts out there. My brain goes way faster than my mouth. And so that's probably why I'm a writer. But since I'm making a YouTube video, I don't have any words. Now, the reason why I put the words in there is so that I can keep track of things I do. Like if I write um, a story on Wattpad or if I do a guest post on somebody else's blog or if I write for vocal media, stuff like that. Some of my other projects also include building uh, Neverwinter Nights modules and I'm in the middle of creating a game using RPG Maker and so those will get put in the projects as well because I'm not getting paid for those. But I'd like to separate my projects from my actual blogging because I am keeping track of how much revenue I get from AdSense with the three blogs that I maintain. So let's say I go back to writing an article at, uh, we'll say I took a half hour break so I started at 3 and I worked until 3.45. 15 minutes, so let's say I did uh, a 500 and uh, a 500, uh, 500 word article and I was only paid $4.80. That's about how much I get for one of the teams that I work for. And as you see, my efficiency goes up to 78.1% and I'm on the road to success because I've spent so much time doing all the other projects that'll propel my career. So that's all nice and dandy for doing it through the day. But what about looking at it for the week? Well, down here I have a weekly tab. This will show me how I'm doing throughout the entire year and a breakdown of every single day. So like say I'm done for the day. So what I would do is I'd go in and then manually type in the numbers and what that does is it keeps that data locked. So tomorrow all I would have to do is highlight that, clear content, I'll clear these, whoops not that one clear these as well voila now I have a fresh day ready to go and my numbers stayed from the day before so let's say we had a day that was like any other day so what this is going to do is break down my estimated salary so throughout the entire year I will make thirteen thousand five hundred and seventy two dollars based on making fifty two dollars a day and I've also taken out all the weekends throughout the entire year total words that I will type 1.3 million every day all I do is just go through and type in the numbers from the day before and start again now my weeks usually run from Friday through Thursday and that's because I'm used to using text broker which pays you on a Friday and that's when the next day of the week starts is on that Friday and so you just write through Friday through Thursday and because I still use text broker quite often that I went ahead and kept that as my work schedule even though in reality it really doesn't matter my retaining client pays me on the 1st and 15th of every month, so. And that's her two cents on the matter. So this is fine and dandy for looking at per week, but what about per year? I got that covered. Now my yearly breakdown, I only keep track of specific stats on each thing. So the number of minutes, the maximum number of minutes, and it calculates the efficiency between the two. Then I have how many words I type that are actually paid, how many words are actually blogged, how much pay do I get per week? Then it calculates all that and gives me my estimated salary for the year. How well I work for the year, the type of work weeks I have, and the number of words. So yeah, I'm a bit of a geek when it comes to keeping track of all my crap. At one point I had all my bills programmed in here as well and it'd give me how much I would have to make in order to pay all the things that I have. But I stopped doing that because my uh, retaining client pays me so much that I really don't need to keep track of all that crap anymore. So anyway, that's how I keep track of my freelancing writing. Now everybody else has their own little niches and what that's like uh, filling out calendars and writing stuff by hand and that's fine. I'm a bit of a geek. You should see my 2014 spreadsheet. I mean, it was extravagant. I went a little overboard on it. I kept track of everything. Now I just mostly keep track of words and pay. Eventually I'm gonna add this spreadsheet to my tools on my website. And when I do, I'll put the link in the description below as well. How do you keep track of your data as a freelancer? Leave in the comments down below. I'd love to read it. Anyway, don't forget to hit the like button. And if you're not a subscriber, I'd appreciate it if you subscribed. But at the moment, I'm gonna go find some aspirin and go lay down somewhere and die. And I hope to see you tomorrow.